So I'm talking to a lot of uh, business executives here in China. One of the things that they're after is seasoned, successful, competent managers, and their timeline is, is now. They want them to come back to work performing. So, so what do they do? They come to us as a, as a corporate training firm, and they want us to develop and, and give them almost instantaneously these competent, seasoned, successful managers who are, who are capable of exercising the knowledge that they've gained through our training. And, and one thing that is really important about, about managing their expectations is helping them understand that knowledge is very different from ability. And the two need to work in tandem and, and feed off of each other. And I'm reminded a lot of uh, when, I was, when I was 15 years old and in the States, I was just fresh off of my uh, driver's test. I passed the 100 question test that I had studied for, for months for because I was going to get the, the one opportunity, the, the day of my birthday, I'm going to go in and I'm going to take the test, I'm going to pass. I did, I was successful, my three months of preparation paid off, I had all the knowledge of what it took to be a competent and successful driver on the road, and so I came screaming home to my parents and said, let's, give me the keys to the car, let's go. And I remember that, that, first, that first drive, and number one, I remember the look on my mother's face. Um, probably because I wasn't looking at the road at that point. And number two, I remember the feel behind the car. And I'd traveled in cars and passenger seats and in the back seats several occasions, you know, my whole life growing up. And, and here I was behind the driver's seat and 30 miles an hour, 25 miles an hour, felt like I was an F1 driver. The thing was moving so quickly and I had no idea what I was doing. And my mother shared my sentiment and was gripping onto the glove compartment in front of her and uh, really just doing all she could to, to help me and coach me through that, that first experience. Here I was, I had all of the knowledge I needed to be a competent and successful driver and make the ra roads a, a safe and, and a great place to be and I wasn't ready yet to be on my own. And that's exactly what we need to remember when we're in our organizations. We're under these time crunches, and in China, unbelievable time crunches. We've got uh, you know, generational issues and, and development issues and uh, growth that demands strong leadership. And we're after, we're all after strong leaders. And we want them now. And so even in, in our organization internally, uh, I understand the need for coaching. And I understand the, from my experience with, with my parents who were saints and, and patient through my whole driving experience and coaching me to be able to drive on my own, how important coaching is to gain that ability to be competent, to be capable. So one of the things I do internally at Clark Morgan is I spend, we, we recognize high potentials and currently we have, we have 12 high potentials in the organization and I spend an hour a month with each of them. Now that's 12 hours a, a month of my time or 144 hours, that's almost four weeks of my time as managing director on coaching of high potentials. Because I know that they can gain the knowledge, they'll get the knowledge to be competent and capable leaders, but it's really the importance of, of helping them understand how, how to really get the ability and, and watching them and coaching them while they're developing that will make them successful and competent and perform in a way that our organization expects them to perform. So remembering that just because someone has knowledge does not necessarily mean they're going to be a capable or competent manager, that it doesn't directly transfer to ability. And that ability comes through the development of your internal leaders with programs, trainings, coachings, and one-on-one -on -one performance reviews.